I'm going to tell you a story about how I think the sound hole design came to be. It's kind of a long story, so while I tell it, I hope you don't mind if I prepare a little snack. Our story starts with the Amati family of Cremona, Italy, who invented the modern violin in 1540 or so. The sons of founder Andrea Amati, Antonio and Girolamo, continued improving the original designs, including the development of the now familiar F-shaped sound hole. The F-shape looks very much like the forte symbol in musical notation. Forte means loud, and what is a sound hole meant to do but make the instrument louder? How is it that a tiny instrument can fill a large concert hall? Every element of the violin is designed to make it resonate and create sound, and the sound hole liberates and projects that sound outward. Sound hole shapes changed greatly over the years, but once the F hole shape design emerged, luthiers have stuck with it for centuries. How did two men with no scientific equipment perfect the sound hole shape almost 500 years ago? Researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have analyzed hundreds of violins, identifying the design features that contribute to the violin's acoustic power. The researchers found that a key feature affecting a violin sound is the shape and length of its sound holes. The elongated shape of the F hole with a thin cutout area created more vibrations along the edge and less non-moving air in the middle of the holes. More vibrations means more sound. The perfect shape for a sound hole is the forte shape. But the question remains, how did the Amati brothers come up with the F hole? Let's take a look at the world the Amati brothers lived in. They lived in the Great Renaissance. Previous to this age of enlightenment were the Dark Ages, when scientific discovery was not encouraged and the religious elite were the keepers of books and knowledge. The Age of Reason brought on new inventions, art, architecture, and global travel. Names like da Vinci, Michelangelo, Galileo, Gutenberg, still influence us today with inventions of the pocket watch, the flush toilet, the thermometer, the telescope, the printing press, and so much more. Astronomers rejected the notion that their conclusions had to align with the church's beliefs. The Earth is not the center of the solar system, planets are not fast-moving stars, or that the Earth is not flat. But even though these thinkers moved away from the church's control over their studies, they still believed that their discoveries would prove the existence and glory of God. This combination of the holy and the scientific was called sacred geometry. Way back in 1202, a teacher named Leonardo Bigelow was playing a simple math game, adding numbers to their sum. One plus one is two. Two plus one equals three. 3 plus 2 equals 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, and so on and so on. Bigelow had no idea of the implications that this so-called Fibonacci sequence would become known as the golden ratio. The golden ratio comes to describe so many naturally occurring formations in nature, the splits of tree branches, vegetables, faces, a sunflower, lightning, shells, hurricanes, spiral galaxies, even the travel of the Earth through space. Many believe that these similarities were more than a coincidence and prove the existence of divine intervention. But back to that, the Earth is not flat, it's a sphere thing. The Renaissance was also the age of discovery as Europeans decided to sail west to reach the Far East, to sail around the globe without fear of falling off the edge. They found that their world was much bigger than they had ever imagined. Along with the unforgivable slave trade, these ships also returned with an incredible bounty, goods becoming much cheaper and arriving faster than on overland routes. But this global travel created the need for better maps. Now, we have GPS and Google Maps, but back then, they only had flat paper maps which are fine for a small area, but poorly describe a large planet. Many different map shapes have been tried over the years, but basically, 
it's very hard to flatten a sphere onto a piece of paper. And with a bad map, you'd be lucky to find where you intended to go or how to return home again. The perfect map is a globe, but it's hard to see details precisely, and you can't carry around a huge globe. So the next question is, how can you unwrap a globe to lay it flat? I suggest that while the Amati brothers debated about the perfect shape for sound holes, they enjoyed a citrus fruit like this one from some far off land. They noted that the orange's shape is a sphere like the globe, and they amused themselves by peeling it in strange ways. Perhaps, as they unraveled the orange, they designed the perfect sound hole, and with the help of a little sacred geometry, discovered a new way to look at the planet.